As a GI doctor, I recommend many of my patients maintain a low sodium diet. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss the things I would never do to keep a low sodium diet. Many patients who are asked to be on a low sodium diet are confident that they're already on one because they don't use a salt shaker. And I agree, I would never use a salt shaker on a low sodium diet. However, we've gotta move well beyond that to really reduce the sodium in our diet. Low sodium diets are a big change, so let's agree on some expectations. I would never expect that food was gonna taste the same after I start a low sodium diet. But what I think you're gonna find is that once you start to remove the hidden salt in your diet, you're also gonna find some new hidden flavors. Not too long ago, we didn't actually have much sodium in our diet. Fresh fruits and vegetables essentially have none, and fresh meat is really pretty low in sodium. It's when we started to preserve food that our diet started to have a lot of added sodium. And I would never expect to have a low sodium preserved meat, whether that's pepperoni, beef jerky, or any kind of deli meat. Now there's a perception that if you're eating a white meat, that this is inherently healthier, and that that should also mean that it's lower in sodium. But that's not really true. Turkey, chicken, if these are deli meats, they're still very likely gonna be high in sodium. And that continues to be true if you're looking at smoked salmon, or canned tuna. In fact, these are some of the highest salt contents of any meat that's available. Canning is another method of preserving food and it usually carries with it a high sodium content. So I would never eat any jarred sauces as these have an exorbitant amount of sodium. Now canned fruit has no added sodium because that'd be really gross, but when you're looking at any vegetable, it has quite a lot. Canned tomatoes, you can sometimes find a relatively low sodium, but it varies from producer to producer and whether they're diced or crushed. All varieties of canned beans tend to have a lot of added sodium. So instead, use dry beans and slow cook them in water seasoned without salt. Of course, soups and canned goods are famous for having high sodium content, but what about those that purport to be low sodium? What does that actually mean? Well, it doesn't really carry any kind of definition from a medical perspective. It simply means that it has less sodium than comparable products, and that could still mean quite a lot of sodium. So I would never simply look at the front of the label, but instead I'd turn that around and look at the back not only would I look at the sodium content, but you wanna look at the serving size. Are you really just gonna have 17 chips? Frozen foods vary widely in their sodium content. Here, vegetables are actually quite good, and of course, as are fruit. These don't have added sodium as they're flash frozen, but many meats have added sodium through a brining process, and I would never have any pre-made frozen meals because these are almost uniformly very high in sodium. However, some food manufacturers are starting to respond to consumers' needs to maintain a low sodium diet. And so again, check carefully for a label that really shows that you've got a low sodium content. Diet and exercise go hand in hand. And so as you make major changes to your diet, hopefully you'll find the energy to also embark on a new exercise regimen. But I would never go and drink a sports drink for a routine workout. Now I say this with a caveat of a routine workout, say 30 minutes in a climate controlled setting. Our skin and kidneys have an amazing capacity to preserve fluid and keep us cool. In fact, we're better at this than essentially any other animal than camels. And so while our cerebral cortex gets so much credit for the success of our species, in fact, the skin and kidneys deserve equal billing. So have faith in their ability and simply drink water and avoid the high sodium content that is used to speed the absorption of water in sports drinks. This is helpful if you're doing two a day practices in the hot, humid summer of South Texas. But if you're doing a routine workout, you simply aren't gonna get vastly dehydrated, and I think you're gonna do just fine with water, and you're gonna avoid often 200 milligrams of sodium. Another mistake I want you to never make on a low sodium diet is to presume that a healthy food is a low sodium food. If you're eating a lot of salad, that's great, but the salad dressings that you're gonna to add to that could very easily have a lot of sodium. Similarly, low fat foods. They often add extra salt to try to amp up the flavor that is being lost as they reduce the fat. So again, turn around the box and look at the back label to see if there's added sugars and added salt. Of course, not all foods come with detailed labels about their nutritional content. And so if you're looking at baked goods, you may not know how much sodium there actually is. Breads very often carry a lot of sodium, and this is true for those that are whole grain. Here I wanna say that we really prefer that you be getting fiber from fruits and vegetables rather than grains. You're gonna get just as much antioxidants, minerals, and other nutrition that that fancy bread purports to have from a fresh fruit or fresh vegetable. Bagels are delicious, but they're often very high in salt. And as you start to reduce the sodium in your diet, I expect in coming weeks, you're gonna taste just how much salt is added to some of these products. 
A lot of cooking shows celebrate salt as a secret ingredient to enhance flavor. And it's true. Our tongue has evolved to crave salt because it's what we use to help maintain our blood volume. But we don't need it in the modern diet. It's become trendy for cookies that you'd expect to be sweet to be topped with sea salt for a crunchy crust. I would never do this. In fact, I eliminate the salt from the batter. Instead, I spice up my cookies with cardamom, cinnamon, and nutmeg. These never would I ever have been making me hungry. So I'm gonna go grab a snack. But I suggest that you subscribe to the channel to continue to find more information about your gut health. And I wanna leave you with a bit of inspiration. When you start to eliminate salt from your diet, your tongue will adapt. And you're gonna to start to find there's lots of hidden flavors in your food. Thank you and be safe.